Aloha everybody, Christabel here, and I am so honored to be here in Sedona, Arizona with Ascension Guide and Way Shower Sandra Walter. Hi sister. Hi sister. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. Blessings everyone. Thank you. So incredible to be here with her live. I've been in a number of her online courses and an avid follower of her offerings. She has an incredible guided group ascension every Sunday. It's a, it's a guided meditation and many of our breathwork facilitators and, uh, and our breath community have been using this guided Ascension journey and today I would love to drop in with you Sandra Thank you. and chat a little bit more about breath work and Ascension and mm -hmm. how we can make this connection more practical more interesting and compelling for those who attend our breath of bliss ceremonies mm -hmm. so so yeah um, we were lucky enough to have your materials as part of our recent facilitator training oh, lovely. yeah so generous <laughs> Thank you. so honored and so maybe we could just start with the basics in case some of sure. our breathwork facilitators are unfamiliar with the concept of ascension. Sure, and ascension yeah. is, it's, it's a term that can kind of intimidate people. And there's really nothing intimidating about the ascension process. It's just really a phase of human evolution that we're experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. When you start participating in an ascension process, you have an awakening, mm -hmm. that's the initiation, you have an awakening. And hopefully it's an awakening to the spirit within. You have some kind of an experience or an intuition or something occurs where all of a sudden your path changes. The higher self knocks on the door and goes, mm -hmm. let's go over here for a while, let's play with this. Because it's the intention of the higher self to have a more spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. And Ascension is about enhancing that spiritual experience to the point where you become a pure conduit of your higher self. Mm -hmm. So there's a merging of consciousness. So we no longer experience the lower self and the higher self as separate. Mm -hmm. You start merging consciousness and it just becomes the higher version of you expressing in these realms. That's all ascension is. It's not about leaving the planet or getting picked up by aliens or anything <laughs> like that. Ascension is the process of unfolding the, the higher self, of revelation of the God self within. And it can be approached from every different direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, the ascension process, there's phases and steps that we go through. You clear out the old so that you can experience more of the new, more of the higher self, and that's the, the typical phases of ascension. So you have the awakening, and then you go through physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual transformation, clearing, a lot of people call it clearing, so that the higher self can step fully into the lower self. Higher self kind of steers the journey after a while. And when you get to phases, higher phases in the ascension process, if you so choose, because it's all done by personal choice, mm -hmm. it's all done by your conscious interaction and intention, you start going through what's called the embodiment process that a lot of us are experiencing right now, which leads you on the path of mastery. And that mastery isn't about control. It's not about giving everybody the cosmic shazam of miracles or walking on water or anything <laughs> like that. Beautiful prophecies, but metaphors for how it feels, how this level of consciousness feels right through the heart. The heart brain starts taking over the journey, and then everything gets easier. So all of this kind of laborious old paradigm that we've all been experiencing uh, is related to cosmic cycles and as we come into this cosmic cycle of transformation into a completely different energy the energies start affecting our consciousness and then we co-create with those energies a brand new experience and that's done through the DNA which is we can get into that mm -hmm. DNA is actually creating our physical experience so it's an interface for the higher self and the lower self, the higher self, of course, being all the different aspects, all the way up the ladder and all the different dimensions and densities, but it's expressing through the DNA and creating the experience of spirit in form. 
So most of you know that you are not the physical experience, that the body is a different consciousness, a separate consciousness, and the DNA is that interface. So the DNA is consistently influenced by your thoughts and your emotions and your spirit and your actions. So as we kind of fine tune our journeys, it leads into DNA activation. Mm -hmm. And that DNA activation is becoming quite palpable on the planet right now and kind of a hot topic of the conversation as well as ascension because people are feeling it. So there's a collective heart field. We're all interconnected. Mm -hmm. When you start really expanding and uh, doing the clearing work, doing the spiritual work to get yourself on the path, you start resonating, so by frequency, it's like little bandwidths of frequency, and you start resonating with folks that are having that experience, and then you resonate a little bit higher, and you're going up, up this, this ladder, this DNA ladder of experiencing more and more of yourself as, as the presence of Source and really connecting with other higher expressions of Source, mm. Gaia, the ent elementals, the kingdoms, the cosmos, you know, it's it's quite a beautiful experience. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. <laughs> and I'm thinking of all of our new breathers in our ceremonies who might not yet be light workers and mm -hmm. acquainted with these very rich um, quantum vocabulary terms. And I guess I'm wondering, you know, so for a breathwork ceremonialist who would bring mm -hmm. this work, um, this this connected breathing that can activate the dimethyltryptamine response mm -hmm. from the pineal pituitary and mm -hmm. their breathers are having expanded states of consciousness. How can we language it in a way that might not overwhelm their sensibilities? Um, mm -hmm. Is there a way to make ascension really easy and really um, yeah. graspable for them? Well, grounded too. Like I teach a very grounded ascension process and mm -hmm. any of you can engage with ascension pass that path, that foundational class, because it does go step by step so it doesn't overwhelm people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, and, and you should know, all of you should know, that if the foundation of your ascension process is built on love and the pure intention to serve, to serve others, to serve God, to serve your higher self, it it will create a platform that's stable. So a lot of people get a little spun out because they're trying to activate this and do this and see that and I want the vision and I want the gifts. But if the foundation is not built on, on unconditional love, it will crumble at some point in the journey and then you get to multiple dark nights of the soul <laughs> to kind of revisit the foundational things. So the foundational platform is love, which anybody can speak about, and especially when you're getting into breath work and you're starting to experience yourself mm -hmm. as love, not just the sensations in the body. You know, the sensations in the body are naturally opening up the DNA. The DNA is very intelligent, mm -hmm. and it's in every cell, mm -hmm. and it's directing your experience, and it never gives you anything more than you can handle. So when you're starting to feel these expanded states of the heart or the expansion of even a uh, light body, do you get into light body with the breath work? We do with the advanced initiates, but you know, okay. we're going out to the masses to bring these ceremonies. Mm -hmm. So for many times it might even be a yoga center in mm -hmm. a city center with someone acquainted with wellness and whole, uh, whole well-being. Mm -hmm. But they, again, they don't have this, uh, this quantum vocabulary of light workers. Yeah. 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 I think they're going to catch up really quickly because <laughs> well, the conversation is so popular now. Yeah. I mean, people are just taking it and running with it. Mm -hmm. But light worker is simply working with the light within mm -hmm. so that the external experience can start reflecting that and then mastery is nothing more than allowing other people to see the divinity within themselves. Mm -hmm. So you become that walking presence of your of your higher self, of divinity, mm -hmm. of divine love. And it does not matter terminology-wise. Um, there's no parameters on unconditional love. It is love is love is love is love. It's all the same thing. So whether you call yourself a light worker mm -hmm. or a way shower, you know, way shower is simply showing the way, mm -hmm. showing the way of I'm going to walk the path of my highest truth in this moment, and your truth will change. 
You know, the, the parameters that we put around truth tend to expand. And you go, oh my gosh, there's more, mm -hmm. and there's more, and there's more. And that's part of the ascension process, too, is consistent revelations of, wow, I feel different. I can behave differently. I can direct my life differently. I can learn how to express myself. That's all part of ascension. So it's, it's all part of the process. Uh, yeah, I'm loving this because it sounds like just beginning with simple concepts and mm -hmm. sharing with our breathers just about love, maybe even the yeah. toroidal field of the heart and the heart field mm -hmm. and just basic, gentle concepts like how to connect with your higher self, what the higher self is and um, accessing those multi-dimensional states of consciousness to feel that connection to everyone that all of this is part of ascension right yeah normalizing that word in that yeah. way and even the word multi-dimensional or higher self you know the higher self isn't up there out there mm. in some other completely different plane of consciousness it is all quantum it's all connected mm -hmm. we are our higher selves already we are just allowing and creating the experience of re-merging with our higher consciousness in the physical mm -hmm. and that's the the challenge of the ascension process the whole project ascension that's going on on the planet right now is to provide that experience like what would it be like it's like God had a question what would it be like if I forgot myself completely went deep into density mm. on a physical planet and had this really physical experience and I didn't know what the heck was going on and just put up all, um, created all these different um, constructs around how I'm going to think and how I'm going to feel and everything and just got away from myself in order to come back and then can I come back can I come back to full awareness can I come back into love and understanding that this whole universe is built on the frequency of unconditional love so it's exploring everything that love is mm -hmm. and is not so that there can be reunification so as we come back into reunification of our own multidimensional aspects, it feels quite divine. It starts yeah. feeling more and more divine and much easier as we go through this process. The beginning work feels kind of cumbersome. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, emotional clearing, I have to get over all of my baggage? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's how you open up to the experience. However, you have a huge collective of light workers and way showers that have created a huge field uh, for the awakening process. Mm -hmm. So the folks were kind of like snow plows. You get all the snow out of the way so the people behind you can drive right through. So it's much easier it goes much faster right now. There's so many tools and good teachers and events mm -hmm. and everything that's available right now to fully support your journey. It's just a matter of internal choice. That's the first step. Do I want to do this? Do I really want to experience that? And if that's a heart-based choice, like, wow, I would really like to experience myself as divine love and see how it affects my whole life. Mm -hmm. And then everything that's out of alignment things that don't feel right, start getting aligned. You start becoming very conscious and kind of fine-tuning your journey. That job doesn't fit anymore. Those people don't fit anymore. I don't want to do that habit anymore. And it's not released with judgment. It's released with love. It's like a real deep appreciation for the, the journey that you've created for yourself. Yeah, I love this again because you're grounding it in such a conscious lifestyle design practical way of like yes. fine tuning the everyday choices that we make and perhaps inviting people in the context of their breath of bliss ceremonies to wonder at the end once they've mm -hmm. had those expanded states, how can they apply and ground those insights in a way that right. realigns them to their heart, their higher self, their soul to source. And, right. Yeah. And those are the practical tools that you can give your students is now that you've had this op this opening mm -hmm. this experience how are you going to apply it to your life mm -hmm. you know how can it be applied and yes it does it's just like any journey you start with a choice and then there's the initiation experience and then there's the integration and the integration involves a recalibration of the consciousness because mm -hmm. you're not the same person that you were 10 minutes ago or two years ago, or ten years ago, or before you went through the process. So you want to guide your students, okay, 
this is where you're going to have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. So you don't leave the, the retreat or the training and go back into your old environment and kind of recreate the past. Mm -hmm. So it is about teaching them to be conscious. There's going to be journaling. You're going to have to spend more time in nature. Yeah. You're going to have to remind yourself, get into the habit of doing the daily breath work and, and really making it a conscious process so that it, it can fully integrate and take you, okay, now what's the next step? You know, it's also striking me when I hear you speak, and it happens a lot, mm -hmm. there is something that emerges from you because this is so much a part of your personal commitment and devotion. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling, you know, for breathwork facilitators, it's so important that if they want to share these concepts, they must already first be embodying as way showers mm -hmm. that commitment, and they must have stories because when I hear you share your stories, it's yeah. it really makes you relatable. It makes the concepts relatable. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it lends this authenticity and grounding to something that otherwise could sound so wildly expansive. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Because that's been part of, a large part of my mission, if you want to call it that, or service work, has been taking these large concepts, mm -hmm. because I'm a, a conduit, a channel, there's some heavy-duty information that comes through sometimes. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with my work, it's like, what? And uh, taking those those big uh, cosmic conversations and, and interpreting them. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot of my job has been interpreting not just the energies, but what they mean, how we can ground them, how we can apply them to our personal journeys. And, and like any way show you have to walk the talk. Yeah. You know, it has. To, it can't just be information that I've received. It's been direct, and anybody who's had contact with direct contact with the masters or galactics or higher realm um, beings that are of a benevolent intent, it changes you. Yeah, that's the key. It changes you, and then you'll notice that the information that's provided is to provide that experience. And you can only share that from your own experience. It can't right. be an intellectual thing. And I think right. that's so important for our Breath of Bliss facilitators to mm -hmm. remember. This this languaging might not resonate with all facilitators. Some might feel more comfortable with talking about Mother Earth, Pachamama, yeah. um, air as plant medicine. Yeah. But um, for those who feel called to this, I feel it's an invitation to um, to inhabit one's own oracular calling at mm -hmm. such a higher level. So you even have your own medicine wisdom bundle available that you can share authentically with your breather. So really it's just about, you know, sharing the truth of our own journey and what has lit us up exactly. and what could serve others in a new and exciting way. And that is being a light worker is yeah. share your journey in an authentic way and other people will naturally light up and it gives people permission to express themselves in an authentic, grounded, truthful way if you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's literally like I've seen people just go, oh, look at her. She's sharing so openly. Mm -hmm. And I've had that same weird experience or, you know, that same spiritual experience. So now I feel more comfortable talking about it. And it does have a domino effect uh, on the collective, too. But again, the goal is your unique expression. Yes of God, of the self, of the higher higher levels. And ascension is not one conversation. And ascension includes the, the people who work with Gaia. You know, mm. I'm a gatekeeper and a grid worker. Extensive work with Gaia, you know, as, as a consciousness, as a conscious being, not just the planet. Extensive work with the kingdoms and the elementals, the plant kingdoms, the mm. network of trees, the, everything, you know, at water especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of water blessings and everything. And that's, you know, talk about, you know, cosmic whatever. I mean, water is a very cosmic thing. You know, it, it's in our bodies, mm -hmm. it's in the planet. You know, we're working with water. You work with air the same way. It's a sacred substance. And when you use it properly, mm -hmm. and when you really honor it, just like everything else, you get the spiritual aspect of the elemental will start talking to you and providing wisdom, reigniting your own wisdom. You know, the, the plant kingdoms and the elementals, they have their own wisdom. They have their own realities. When you tap into that, you know, some of it will resonate. Maybe some of it won't. 
but it will support your journey because Gaia, the mm -hmm. whole her whole body, the whole experience is fully supporting the ascension process. She's built for that. That's why we're here. <laughs> But it's yes. your unique expression, so it doesn't matter the terms that you use, doesn't matter. We're all coming at it from different directions, and that's an aspect of unity, mm -hmm. consciousness, coming back to the planet, coming back to our awareness itself. The unity, and unity consciousness is very important, mm -hmm. because you'll start feeling it. The urge to co-create, to unify with people, to unify with everything that's around you. And that's the end of separation. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets really exciting. I think when yeah. we come together with other mystics and visionaries and pioneers like Sandra and I meeting together and sharing ideas, uh, where that conscious collaboration occurs, it's like, a, again, a ripple effect for mm -hmm. so much creative sharing. And yeah, from my heart, I, I really hope that this talk with Sandra inspires you to wonder how you can deepen your own path as a sacred pilgrim, as a way shower, your own communion between heaven and earth as a channel and, you know, using your breath, moving your body, opening your perception to these toroidal fields of energy from your heart and being in this deep connected presence with others around you with your students with your community mm -hmm. so that really facilitating breath of bliss ceremonies is simply an invitation for you to step up to the next level of your sacred communion in your own heart right. and for me i don't know about you sandra but for me that is one of the most exciting parts of this work mm -hmm. and of sharing it with others is that it invites such a high level of personal devotion and integrity and accountability in one's own personal practices. Right. Yeah. Right. And when you start demonstrating that integrity, the kind of calm grace, mm -hmm. some people associate it with a divine mother frequency. It's very strong mm -hmm. coming back to the planet. But those of us who are carrying that space for other people to have an experience around us, you don't have to do anything <laughs> but express yourself and hold space for people to open up their own hearts and when you're demonstrating that it becomes so much easier for other people so facilitating I'm all about the facilitators right now mm. and it doesn't matter what kind of healing or what kind of activation you're facilitating the key is to provide the clearest highest vibrational highest intentional um, space for people to have an experience and then you let go you know we're not trying to convert or uh, anybody into you know a belief system because we're letting those go it's really just about maintaining that sacred space uh, within mm -hmm. and then consistently thought word deed action feeling consistently aligning with that higher version of ourselves which allows naturally just by if you want to talk quantum <laughs> physics is a vibration and the, the higher vibration always pulls up the lower. Yes. And all you have to do is be the presence. You know, that's what we're moving into. It's just being the presence of your pure self without all the veils and without all the baggage. And then it's playtime. Yeah. And then it's creative. It's very creative. And I think just to bringing our vulnerability and our own human journey and our own challenges in these stories and how... Mm. Um, how we've been empowered to navigate them in new ways with these expanded understandings. Uh, again, just bringing it down to the earth, making it practical, making it real, making it approachable. Um, the truth is, as, as Sandra said, we're not here to convert anybody to anything. It's really mm -hmm. empowering people to remember their own sovereign divinity so that they can access their own quantum creativity and uh, get in touch with their own inspirations as a way shower to, to be, do their part to co-create this unity consciousness. Right. So, and start yeah. small. You know, yeah. start with your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Put so it is after everything that you think or say or do and then you become aware of what you're creating in your reality and then you start shifting it mm -hmm. and start shifting it and you just pay more attention to to the heart rather than the mental patterns and it all starts aligning mm -hmm. it's actually it's not as difficult as people think you know people hear 
mastery or mystery <laughs> schools and they're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to go to a cave in the Himalayas for 10 years or whatever. That's not the way it is anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if the dynamic is changing. I feel spirituality itself is changing. Yes. We're kind of coming out of the coma of the new age and, and getting into like a very free flowing energy that's actually coming to us and emanating from the planet herself. That's what the whole shift of the ages was about, was a complete change in the energy and the dynamics to provide a completely different reality. Mm. So as we come into this kind of golden age, uh, prophetic time, that's what's happening and you can feel it. And everyone in, the, in this beautiful free will planet, free will universe that we're in, everybody has the opportunity to express themselves, the highest version of them, and and the the thing to remember is to really honor people wherever they are in their journey and just embrace them with love mm -hmm. you know it's for some people it's not easy to change you know change is the most difficult thing for a human to do and as you go through change and you start applying what you've learned to your personal journey just have faith that if you follow your heart and you take action on those little things of like, hmm, I want to expand, mm -hmm. I want to work with this person, I would love to transform my students, but I know they have to do it themselves. So you provide the highest experience in the moment and then they do with it what they will. You know, you follow up with them, you check in with them, you give them tools so that they can integrate it into their lives as, as best you can, give them a ton of tools and here's what you could do and uh, here's a meditation and that's why we check in every Sunday. Mm. We do these global unity meditations, thousands of light workers all over the planet connecting on Sundays to meditate together simply because it gives us a little touchstone. It allows us to connect. We start seeing each other and feeling each other and, and connecting right through the heart. And it provides a, a field of support mm -hmm. for everybody who's going through this beautiful transformational phase that's very exciting. Yeah, I love this. If you haven't experienced this yet, this was actually how I first experienced Sandra's work was the free mm -hmm. Unity Global Meditations, mm -hmm. um, which we also used at our Breath of Bliss facilitator training. Mm -hmm. That was the way they got to meet you first. Oh, great. And, uh, you know, I do want to also ask for your thoughts and expertise on what's your experience on the connection between conscious, connected, open mouth breathing mm -hmm. and the ascension process or D and or DNA activation? Yeah, well, DNA activation is not as complicated as, as some people make it, but DNA activation is just creating a, the whole key to DNA activation is to open up all of the, um, is to clear all the things that are getting in the way of the DNA activation because the DNA responds to your thought patterns, it re responds to your subconscious, it responds to your emotions, it responds to your heart. No DNA activation occurs without heart coherence. So once you start aligning with that, you, you allow your body, the body vehicle and the DNA to start giving you a different experience. So when you're doing breath work, you're actually creating a new experience for the body and then the DNA goes, aha, you're doing something new. We want something new. We want something else. So it starts, of course, you've experienced the clearing effects of, of breath work, but what you're doing is you're getting the old habits and the old behaviors and the old thought patterns mm. out of the way so that the DNA can create something new. Mm -hmm. So it's like a trigger. Yeah. You know, you start doing anything different in your spiritual path, but especially something as powerful as breath work, you start doing that, you're actually triggering your cells to create something new. So that in itself is DNA activation. You're actually opening the field and getting the DNA, I mean, if you want to get technical, yes. you're getting the <laughs> DNA to, to rebundle, to, to wind mm. in a, in a, a, a way that doesn't um, restrict light. So DNA is bio, bioluminescent, so it all has to do with wormholes in your DNA. <laughs> so you can either let a lot, of, a lot of light in by getting into the relaxed, open, heart-based state, or if you're stressed out or concerned or creating yesterday's worries, the DNA coils up 
and it just can't receive mm -hmm. new information. So when you're doing this kind of conscious breath work and consciously telling the body to have a new experience, to provide a space, provide expansion for a new experience, you're literally triggering your DNA activation. Yeah. You know what? It's not I, that complicated. And, and <laughs> I love that you started that by saying it all begins with heart coherence. It does. Because that's what we do in Breath of Bliss ceremonies is we always have these heart shares after the ecstatic movement. And mm. hearing you language this really um, validates a felt sense that our participants express of like, wow, there's something about those heart shares and revealing vulnerably to each other. and and softening and be more gentle with ourselves that allows the breath to go so much deeper. Right. So I'm understanding it's almost like those heart shares before the breath journey uncoil and maybe loosen that DNA yes. a little bit, let a little more light peek in there. Yeah, and all yeah. the facilitators too. You always want to create a safe space for people to share. Mm -hmm. So a non-judgmental open share wherever people are in their journey is absolutely fine. You know, yeah. you set some parameters, you know, don't take up too much time. <laughs> but we do this this sharing activity so that it does. It, yeah. it opens you up going, okay, now I can really move into this and feel it yeah. and allow it to really register. It's light registering on the DNA. And we have that group share at the end where people do at the very end express. Mm -hmm. And you know, hearing you speak as well, um, it really um, brings clarity into why we always have prayer at the beginning with our facilitators and the angelic team that we work with. You know, taking that time to come into our own hearts before the breathers even come in and programming the space with intention mm -hmm. and invocations and the altar uh, setting the field with that angelic frequency, it's almost like all of these things prepave the space itself to allow that uh, expansion of the heart as well. Right. Do yeah. that in your own space too. I mean, you're in command of your space. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's small or huge. Uh, grid your space, mm -hmm. use the crystals, use the intention, pray in your space, burn mm -hmm. the frankincense, mm -hmm. play the singing bowl, you know, make sure that you maintain that vibration. It just makes everything easier when yeah. you have a clear field to operate in. And that's to say, in closing, I think it's so important for us to remember that facilitating sacred space and ceremonies for others is simply an extension of our personal practice of facilitating ceremonies and heart healing for ourselves. And really, it's the overflow of our own prayer field and our own uh, living, breathing practice of self-inquiry and, uh, and devotion and communion with the land and our own God and teachers that it's almost like we're coming with a big overflowing basket into our <laughs> ceremonies and just sharing the abundance right. that we've generated in our own lives. So I hope this video inspires you as a Breath of Bliss facilitator or any other kind of facilitator to just really deepen in your communion with Mother Earth, with the cosmos, with your heart, um, and anything else that allows you to feel that heart expansion. Yeah, so you can create powerful, empowering space for others to come and find their way home to themselves in your ceremonies. Right. Yeah. And kind of taking the personal out of it. Yeah. You know, that's part of the ascension. It's just like, I just want to be of the highest service that I can provide in this moment. Mm -hmm. and we all go through evolution, but it's really providing that opportunity for other people to find that mastery within themselves. Yeah. So if you're interested in spending some more time with Sandra, she has uh, so many ways that you could reach her if you want to share some Sure, some just info. go to my website, sandrawalter.com, and you'll see right at the, at the top, there's an area where you can sign up for the newsletter. I inspire people every week for the last 20 years. <laughs> I send out this newsletter, and it's just light and coded to support your journey mm. and tells you what's going on with the ascension process, basic reminders sometimes and what's going on with us. And of course, reminders for the weekly Sunday Unity Meditations. We've been doing them for three years now in this year of 2019. And uh, we'll continue to do so because it's mm -hmm. just we're getting more and more people coming together. And then we work as a collective consciousness. So that's mm. the goal. Unification, unification, unification. And there's a ton of free tools 
on my website as well as my online classes that anybody can access anytime. Yes. I can validate or uh, vouch for those amazing classes. And um, if you're interested in deepening your practice as an oracle, as a way shower, as a somatic uh, ceremonialist, mm -hmm. um, do check out the Breath of Bliss group facilitator program that happens uh, about once a year at this time. And we will have some materials from Sandra as a guest facilitator presented there. And you can learn more at breathofbliss.com. So thank you so much. Wishing you uh, so much alignment in your life, so much yes. light, uh, so much beauty, so much connection, and yeah, the joy of being of service to others. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank, thank you, you, sister. <laughs> it's been lovely connecting yeah, with you. I'm so thank grateful. You, Blessings Bye, everybody. everybody.